obviously are the mark, and I've lived there for 20 years. Um, it is the most beautiful, beautiful place. It is incredibly remote. It's not an island, but it's much more remote than an island, because it's a peninsula. And in order to get to our American out here, you've either got to go to Fort William and fight your way down single track roads for two hours, or you have to come up through open, cross over to Mull, and then cross over to Kilhoa. We were fortunate, though, that uh, on Ardenbergen, there was an event. Very, very quietly, for a number of years, a group called the Ardenbergen Transitions Project, which is basically a group of very, very well-known um, archaeologists, uh, were coming up to Ardenbergen and bringing groups of students and concentrating in just one place on Ardenbergen, on the north coast of Ardenbergen, a place called Sordal, which, of course, is derives its name from the Norse. It's basically the grassy valley. And just by luck, more than, than anything else, and Phil will nod and agree, they unearthed this thing, which is the most complete Viking boat burial on the mainland of Scotland. It included, of the Dunyamal, a Viking chief with all his paraphernalia, his sword, his shield, his axe, the whole lot. And through that, those of us locally got to know a couple of characters. <laughs> one of them being this <laughs> and one of them this being this lovely lady. And you'll recognize this thing here because that standing stone has become our uh, logo for the Ardenberg and uh, History and Heritage Association. But I'd like, if I may, just to go back to before we met these people because because Arden Merkin is so remote, people like me just found things but didn't know what they were. I, I, just a moment of, on, on my background, I, I'm not a, a, an archaeologist. I, I knew 10 years ago absolutely nothing about the archaeology. I wouldn't even know if the Neolithic was older than the Mesolithic. I was a geologist by background. I was a shopkeeper on Arden Merkin. And in my walkings across Art Merkins, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to walk across. I was coming across things like this, and I didn't know what they were. So I asked the locals, this thing's about three metres across or so, and probably you know what it is, but I didn't. The locals told me it was a bull pen, and that's where you kept your bulls. Well, since this is in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> and there were five of them spread across a little glen with a bird running through the middle of it, I wondered why they needed five things to keep bulls in. And also, if it's only three metres across, either the bulls were very, very small, or you folded them up at night before you put them in. <laughs> that, if you like, whetted my appetite. This hooked me on archaeology. Now, bear in mind, my professor of geology said that anything after the Cretaceous was gone and not to deal with. <laughs> this, this, I'm afraid, after this, I really took off because I didn't know what this is. It's 12 metres across, it's a circle of stones. It's the most wonderful, wonderful place. I still don't know what it is. Some people say it's a curved can, but we find no kiss inside it. Some people say it's a, a Bronze Age hut or something. But it is really, really magnificent. I had to know what that was. So after that, and more and more of us on the peninsula were beginning to get interested. We just started walking, looking for things. That's my daughter in the middle of there, and that is the hut circle. That is a, an absolutely superb bronze or iron age hut circle, uh, just along from Sword. And then others of us got involved. This chap here is a very famous gentleman called Ricky. Ricky has actually got a, a, a part of the Sword excavation named after him. This is another thing you found, and you keep, I'm sure, will know what it is. Uh, and it was unknown. It's just by Mingery Castle, and he found that, and it's, since he's already got one cat named after him, he can't give it his second name, so that's called Ericsson's cat. This is the sort of thing we began to do. We began to plot where we were finding this. It's just a fraction of the things that we found in those early years. S's, for example, are shillings. We found a number of very interesting, what we think are whiskey stills. Um, and that we were digging a rather random way of guessing what the things were. I think the big sort of change came when we began to get involved with 
with uh, adopter one. And can I say that was just like revolution? Because suddenly we had people who actually helped us and tell us what things were and teach us things. And I think one or two people will recognise this particular event, absolutely lovely day, and we're learning to do the call photogrammetry. And we've actually carried that on since that was done, and we've, we've had some great fun with it. Um, that particular thing is was done at a place called Saul at uh, Camas Nagal. Camas Nagal is probably one of the most beautiful, beautiful bays anywhere in the world. And that standing stone we saw earlier on was is actually where the arrow is there. And therefore, when they began to talk to Cara and Phil, they began to, they began to encourage us, and we began to look at things to adopt. The first thing we adopted, in fact, was the site of the standing stone. And there it is, and that's how it was when we first adopted it. In fact, I tell you, the bracken there is so high that the first time Phil went into it, he disappeared completely. And he's not a small man. What we've done as part of our adoption of this thing, which is clock shower, is to clear it. And behind it, lost throughout the summertime, is a wonderful 17th, 18th century uh, graveyard with some brilliantly beautiful gravestones in it. Um, and we've done things like replace the fence around it because the surrounding fields were used by, were used by the estate for grazing cattle and sheep. And we secondly adopted this, again, lovely, lovely churchyard. This is St. Cohen's Church, which gives our local village, our main village, Kilhoe, its name. Um, it actually dates back from the, to the uh, 12th century, though probably the original church was there about the 8th. And we, inevitably, uh, did some more work with some of the people from Digital Design. This is doing RTI. If you can believe it, there are 50 people underneath there looking at doing some work on two wonderful Ionian own uh, um, grave slabs. And a doctor monument taught us other skills like how to record gravestones properly and we're in the process now of putting all that information together and producing a booklet to go uh, for visitors to be able to buy before they go up to have a look at St. Cohen's. The trouble with getting involved though, with things like this is inevitably things go wrong. Now, just really as we got into St. Cohen's and began to enjoy ourselves in, in the, the graveyard, Highland Council, who owned it, decided that the lintel stone, this is the only entrance into the church, was dangerous. Well, we all know what happens once somebody says something is dangerous, it has to be closed. So it was rather inefficiently closed off. Uh, and we said, well, why is it closed? What's wrong with it? It's been there for an awful long time. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two cracks in that lintel stone. You probably can't see them. That's the reason that it was closed up. So inevitably, we felt we wanted to do something about it. Well, we were lucky. Because at the time that we were asked, we were thinking of doing something about St. Kevin's. And this building, which is Mingery Pass, which is also on our end of our American, was just being completely refurbished. It's a superb building. The local estate, owner of the estate, Donald Houston, decided that he wanted to take it from a ruin, and it was about to fall in the sea. It wasn't a question of just refurbishing it, it was a question of if he didn't do something about it, he was going to go into the sea. And he has actually completely renovated it. It's now a high-end sort of hotel, if you like. But, great joy was, while they were there, we picked up the architect, the builder, and the structural engineer and said, would they mind coming in and a quick look at some colours? Well, this is Bra, the structural engineer, and he's actually standing underneath the bit that the Highland Council decided was terribly dangerous. And Bra looked at that and said, no problem with that, that's still another hundred years. But, do something about the arches. Because those arches, and that's the better one, one of the key words was even worse than that. For goodness sake, do something about those arches. So, we, Talk to Historic Scotland, Historic Environment Scotland now, after a lot of difficulty, again with huge support from Cara and Phil, who wrote nicely about what we were going to do, we got a grant actually to, men, to basically support the whole of the South Kassar. So this is the wonderful, wonderful stone base who actually, who actually rebuilt Mingary Castle by himself, a called Damien from Yorkshire. He actually worked on it, and there we have now a completely um, well, it'll be there for another hundred years and you can now go into it. 
how the council moved the steel fence table from it, stop people going in. And you know, we're very proud of what we've done. Again, it's one of those things we haven't got together as a group uh, with Carl Phil's sort of encouragement. That would never have happened. We've got one stage further now. Um, we've got enough confidence as a group, A, to change our name, I think, for the third time into the Argon Urban History and Heritage Association. But if we wanted to feel, if we wanted to tell people what a wonderful place Argon Urban was, and we also wanted to celebrate what we've managed to do with your support, Cara and Phil. And we applied, therefore, for a Heritage Lottery Grant. Again, we've got wonderful support from two of them, and we have recently been given £9,300 to spend in the area. Uh, mostly publicising what is that, but there's quite a tell you, Ardenburg, Western Ardenburg is a particularly difficult place to get to. But if you ever get the chance to go out there, it is a beautiful place, and the archaeology out there is just unbelievable. You've got a geologist saying that, it is absolutely unbelievable, and I would urge you to go to that. But can I simply say to the people who are considering what the future of the Dr. Monument should be, look at me, look at Ardenburg History and Heritage Association, look at what can be achieved just by giving people in very, very remote areas just the right sort of support. Thank you.